right next to me is a hybrid vehicle that gets similar gas mileage to a Prius, but looks nothing like it and looks like a race car. This is the 2025 Honda Civic Sport Hybrid Touring Hatchback. Yes, I know that's a long name, but in this video, I'll be taking you through everything this vehicle offers. And the real question is, is it worth it? Well, let's see. Because this specific vehicle is $33,000 base. Now this has a $500 option that brings it to $34,000 after destination fees. But this does have some dealer options on it. It has the tailgate spoiler, which I'll get into back there. It has black emblems and a special paint coating that brings it total to $37,000. But base, if you want this vehicle without any of these options, it's $34,000. Huge thank you to Liberty Honda in Hartford, Connecticut for allowing me to use this vehicle for the day. Their information will be linked down in the description below. Let's dive right into it and talk about the front because this front is absolutely crazy. It's like an economy if energy efficient hybrid vehicle and looks like an absolute race car. There's full LED headlights, LED daytime running lights and LED turn signals built into this long piece right here. And it kind of has like an eyebrow that slants down, makes it look angry and aggressive. I really like the styling. Down here is actual airflow. So this takes air, sucks it through to the side to improve the air dynamics of this vehicle and it comes out the back here. Now these little dots are your parking sensors. So those things will actually beep at you. Like if I come close to you guys in the tripod right now, it's going to beep at me saying, hey, stop, no, don't hit it or another vehicle because it doesn't want you to hurt yourself, anyone else or do anything bad. Up front here, you have these black pieces right here that actually works as airflow. So this takes air through here and through here to improve the engine performance. And there's a ton of it. A lot of vehicles will just kind of have fake stuff here. No, this is actual airflow as I stick my whole hand in there. And then up front, you have the Honda badge. In this specific vehicle, this is the gloss black one because that upgraded package. Now they do normally have silver, but the black looks pretty cool. So now under the hood is where this vehicle starts to get a little crazy because this vehicle has an engine and two motors actually and a battery. So this engine is a two liter four cylinder non turbo. So it's naturally aspirated non turbo engine and this produces 150 horsepower alone. But paired up with the battery in the hybrid system, this vehicle pushes out 200 horsepower and 232 foot pounds of torque, which is actually insane because it makes this vehicle go zero to 60 in 6.2 seconds. The Civic SI, which is like their sportier version, goes zero to 60 in 6.6. .6. So this little hybrid Civic is faster than the sportier version, which is absolutely wild. And when I get to the inside and the back, I'll show you the little branding because there's only two spots in this whole entire vehicle that show the hybrid badge. So if you want to take those off and this has the wing on the back and everything, it'll make it look like a race car and no one would ever know it's a hybrid. Well, how does this hybrid system work? Well, I'm going to explain it in simple terms. This uses two different modes, a series and a parallel mode. Most of the time it's used in series, which that uses the engine as a generator to produce power to the battery. Then that battery supplies power to both front wheels and pushes the vehicle. That's usually used at low speeds and if the battery is low, but this also could be run in parallel. Well, the parallel is when the engine and the battery run simultaneously to then power both front wheels. That's usually used in highway speeds or when the battery is fully charged. And those two modes will be turned on and off when the vehicle feels like it. So you don't have to go and customize, do anything yourself. It'll do it automatically. And the crazy thing about this hybrid system is it gets a combined total of 48 miles to the gallon, which the Priuses get a combined total of 55, I think. So this is slightly under a Prius and looks way, way better than a Prius in my opinion. If you like cars just like me, can you hit that subscribe button down below? Only takes one second and helps me out a lot. Thank you. The key fob of this vehicle is pretty simple, ordinary. You got the Honda badge there, black plastic, nothing crazy. Lock, unlock, your typical stuff. This button here I thought was to open up the trunk, but it's just to unlock it. It's not a power operated trunk, so you just hit that and then you have to manually go up and bring it up. It's actually kind of hard to like open up. It's a little bit of a force you have to do, which I'll get into when I show you the rear. And then double tap the lock, hold this, and the vehicle should remote start and it doesn't want to remote start. So I don't know if I'm doing anything wrong. Let me know in the comments below if I am. I'm holding that, nothing, holding it again. It's blinking, but nothing's 
going on. No roof rails on top, it's a hatchback. You've got a sunroof up here. These mirrors have blind spot monitoring built into the side and turn signals built in here, which is very nice. These are 18 inch alloy rims with all season weather tires. And these are the super cool sport touring rims that are specifically on the touring model of this vehicle. And then with the keys in a pocket, just walk up here, hit this button, and then that locks, hold the handle, and it unlocks. Open up the rear door and you're greeted to plastic. I mean, there's plastic absolutely everywhere, but you gotta realize this has the hybrid system. You're kind of paying for that and not really luxury materials. So hard touch plastic up here, hard touch there, down there. That's where you put drink snacks, wash it away, very nice. It's two speaker grills, one down there and up here. There's actually a pretty decent leatherette armrest here and leatherette over on the side. So they do differentiate from just the plastic. And I also do like how it's not just all the cheap black plastic. They make it kind of gloss plastic here. This looks similar to kind of a carbon fibery type thing. I'm assuming that's their idea, but at least it doesn't look completely cheap. They make it look okay. And then hopping in the rear here, you have a actually a decent amount of leg room. Now this is set to my driving position. I'm 5'8", not the tallest, but the leg room is actually not bad. And headroom, it's okay. I think probably like one or two more inches and you're done. So six feet tall is probably not going to work in here, but you could probably kind of lean forward and be fine. The middle hump in this is massive. So this is not going to be comfortable. You're going to have to man spread in this vehicle. So that's not too bad. There still is enough room, I think, for three adults to fit in here comfortably fine. And there's a little pocket in the back here. There's no AC vents or USB C's or A's in the back. I mean, I guess you're close to the front where you could drag a cable or the AC will hit you. So not too bad at all, really. And these seats are extremely comfortable. They're the leatherette, super plush, nice. They're actually extremely nice. Three headrests and this one cannot, oh, they all can't come up. So that's the way the headrest is. And then push this down. You've got a couple of armrests that doesn't lock into place. So it's the way it is. You can't like lock it here, which you kind of could, but two cup holders, nice squishy to rest your arm. Overall, the back seats are not bad. Let's see, can these recline? No, they cannot. So it's just this or that. There is a sunroof in this vehicle, but it's really not accessible to the rear seat passengers. You're not gonna be able to see. It's mostly for the front seat people, but then if you hold this, it opens up and actually opens up decently far. So I can stick my whole hat out there and enjoy the outside. Open up the front door and you're greeted to pretty much all the same materials, but instead this up here is soft touch plastic where in the rear is hard touch. Same hard touch here, down here, hard touch, spot to put cup snacks, wash it away. You do only have one speaker grill on this, not two, but I guess that makes sense because that's where the speaker grill inside is. So that totally makes sense. And the armrest here in this part here is actual genuine real leather. I made mistakes and talk about that it was leatherette in the rear. I probably put a little error on it, but this is actual genuine leather here. You got two window controls, which are one touch up and down the rear. You do have to hold. And then you have mirror controls and door handle. Both the driver and the passenger gets real leather bucket seats that are actually heated. They fit you into place there. They're heated seats and then they have power operated. So forward, back, tilt controls. There is no lumbar for the driver and the passenger passenger, but I do got to say, at least the passenger gets power operated seats. A lot of other vehicles don't give the passenger that and just make it all manual. Turn on the vehicle with a push to start and you are greeted to a full digital gauge cluster. No analog whatsoever, full digital here. And this can be completely customized more than a lot of vehicles I've seen. So this side can be, and that side can be. So what's pretty cool is you can use these little things down here to hit it. So let me hit it for both and then I'll scroll down, hide and show. And so I could show you all the different things that can be customized. This over here cannot actually be the object. It's just kind of, so for phone, it doesn't show your phone there or AM, FM radio. It just shows it over here instead. It turns it kind of it on like a hotkey where this, it actually shows it over here. So this side you have phone, AM, FM radio, USB, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, Amazon Alexa. So this could be a simple hot bar to let's see, go back for, I'll show you guys. So back, um, hopefully it doesn't blast the music, but if I wanna turn FM radio on, boom, right there. It turns AM, FM radio on if I want to. This side is the options. So you can go in and let's say I want power flow. So scroll down, you got the power flow, you got range, fuel, average time speed, navigation, 
drive safety. So you could turn all this stuff off if you want. You don't have to have any of this here if you don't want it. But then the next thing down is the coolest thing, is a seatbelt monitor thing. So it shows me that I'm not buckled right now. So if I wanna go and buckle, it's gonna check it off. So if you have kids in the rear that are not buckled, they unbuckled and they're kind of being funny and you wanna see, oh, are they buckled? See it right there, so you don't be distracted as you're driving. But the crazy thing is that's not it with the customization options. What if you're like a minimal design and you want really nothing here? Well, you can do that. So go to customize display, scroll down to gauge design, and you could have it as a bar setting. Well, what's bar? Well, it shoves those both over to the side. So it has your charge power over here and then your speedometer over there. That's your speedometer over there. It's like a line bar that goes up and down and it makes this whole thing plain and open. So for a minimalist design, this vehicle has a leather wrapped non-heated steering wheel. And in the back there's paddle shifters and those don't actually control the gearing of the vehicle. Those control the regen braking. So you hit the plus and you can go to four different stages of regen braking. So that's gonna, you know, maximize your energy. It's gonna take leftover energy from the movement of your car and put it back into the battery. If you don't want that whatsoever, you don't have to have it. You can just keep hitting the minus and not have it at all. This steering wheel has volume controls, voice controls. This is a skip songs. Over here is some of your safety settings. This says adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist. This has forward collision mitigation. It has the blind spot monitoring that I showed you earlier over there. And then put this vehicle into reverse and you have a backup camera with moving trajectory lines, which is actually very nice. It's not the clearest camera, but at least it's full. It gets the job done. And there are some different camera angles. So it's not just one. You wanna make it dimmer? You can make it dimmer if you want. It's actually very nice. This vehicle has a touchscreen with wireless Android on, wireless Apple CarPlay, and it is above a lot of other touchscreens. Honda used to be slacking with their touchscreens, but they just have nailed it with this one. It's super simple, super easy to use, customizable. And what's cool is this whole sidebar here can be customized. So I can say, I don't want, you know, FM radio there. I want the compass. Boom, just put it right there. And then I go back to home, hit that and the compass pulls up. Why would you want a compass? I, I don't know, but hey, it's kind of cool. But there's so many other different options you could change into this. So your power flow for your hybrid system shows you the miles you have on the range. That's pretty cool. Then hit that Google Maps and you want to use Google Assistant. Take me to the closest McDonald's. Okay, McDonald's. And it'll take me go. to the closest McDonald's, which is very cool. They have completely outdid themselves with this touchscreen. And another plus on Honda is the Google Play Store built into this touchscreen. So you can log in with your account, you can get apps like Spotify, YouTube Music, SoundCloud, and I guess some audiobooks, and you can have that built into the touchscreen here. So don't know why Prime Video is coming up there. You cannot get Prime Video on this. I wish you could, but you can't. But you can have some audiobooks and music. So like usually you plug in your phone with Android Auto, Apple CarPlay to get Spotify, just throw your phone out, throw it to another country, and you could still use this without your phone. Below the touchscreen, there is physical AC controls. Yes, Honda, we want that physical. They are keeping the physical and I like that. So it's very clicky, nice to use here. Simple, easy. This is your heated seat controls, so just on off for both the driver and passenger. Then some more controls down there. Below here, you have your wireless charging pad. You can put a phone there, charge it wirelessly. Two USB type C ports, and then your 12 volt charging outlet there. Two cup holders in the middle, fit a water bottle there. This is your drive mode selector. So you can go and customize from eco, normal, sport, or even go into individual mode and you can customize little different things. So if you want the powertrain to be all sport aggressive, the fastest possible, but the steering to be normal, you can go in and customize that. Change the engine sound to sport or normal. I like how they do it. It's customizable. Then down here, your parking brake, brake hold. The leather armrest is super nice, plush and comfortable. Open it up and you have this little kind of storage thing here. You wanna put a wallet there? Perfect. But let's say take that out, throw that away. And you have a massively deep storage pocket to fit multiple water bottles in. The rear of the vehicle is just as crazy as the front. There's a lot of stuff going on here. So you have LED taillights, but you do have halogen turn signals or incandescent. Let me know if I'm wrong on that. I'm pretty sure these are incandescent lights, but if I'm wrong, let me know in the comments below. You have the Civic badge there, Honda badge right front and center, and then your hybrid sport badge all the way over there. Now in this specific upgraded one, these are all black, but the normal ones, they would be silver. And then I could told you about the hybrid badge. If you want to take that off and you just leave the sport badge, no one would ever know this is a hybrid, especially with this wing up top. So this is an HPD wing that's, you know, a few hundred dollar option in this specific vehicle, but it makes it stand out, look aggressive and sporty. 
This is a hybrid with 48 miles to the gallon we're talking about, and it has aggressive pieces like a race car. It's absolutely insane. And then these little dots are your parking sensors. So just like the front, it'll beep at you when you back up to something saying, hey, stop, no, don't hit it because it doesn't want you to hurt anyone. And down here you have like a kind of a diffuser. I don't know if this really does anything. It kind of is just plastic down here, but it makes it look aggressive and nice. Then all the way on that side, you do have an exhaust tip. It is completely hidden under there, but you do have an exhaust tip. So open up the trunk or I guess the hatch, hit this button and you have to manually lift it up. Now it is decently heavy for a hatch. I'm assuming it's because the wing is on this specific one, but what is this thing? Well, it's a privacy shield like other vehicles have, but if you don't want it, just simply put it like that and it stays there. So not like any other privacy shield, we have to actually lift the whole thing up and then put it in your garage and then never really use it again and have it leave it there. This can just store here and if you want it again, just shoo. But then what if you completely want it out like other vehicles? Well, just push this little knob and then shake it around and the whole thing comes loose in this little tiny piece. Like usually again, privacy shields are massive. This thing folds up just like a little map basically. Super cool and then you can tuck it away and never see it again if you don't want to. The storage in here is actually massive. I could fit two of me completely fine in here. So you could fit probably a, a shelf in here if you kind of want to, or like a kind of a dresser, it could fit it totally fine. You have speaker grill there, speaker grill there, and then a subwoofer on this side. There's no cigarette outlet port in the back here, but then let's say you want more storage, just push these seats down if I can actually get them down. Push those seats down and then you can completely lay down here, have a picnic, camp. The only thing I will say is this does have a massive hump in here. So it, it mostly kind of flattens it out, I guess, because the seats are lifted up, but it does have a pretty decent hump here. And just to clarify, there is actually another privacy shield, which I did find up here. I didn't know this at start, but yes, this one you actually have to take out and store somewhere but at least that one, you don't. And I hate to inform you, but it does not come with the spare tire. It comes with the fixed flat kit. I wish they had a spare there, but I guess weight savings, that's why a lot of companies are doing it. So you gotta fix a flat. But the real question is, what do you think about this vehicle? Do you like it or do you absolutely hate it? And do you think it's worth it? Let me know in the comments below. And please remember to like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell to keep updated with more content. And a huge thank you to Liberty Honda of Hartford, Connecticut for allowing me to use this vehicle for the day. Their information will be linked down in the description below.